Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I play through the Leisure and Decadence expansion for It's a Wonderful World. And I thank you for joining me for this solo playthrough of It's a Wonderful World, the Leisure and Decadence campaign expansion that is releasing this month. I was provided with this review copy from Lucky Duck Games and I appreciate them for their generosity. And so I want to let you know that there is going to be some spoilers in this video because I'm going to play through the first chapter and so you're going to see the contents of the first envelope. Of course you would see that right away if you opened up the game and started playing. But I'm also going to open up the second envelope at the end of this playthrough just to show you if you want to see it what comes next. So I will let you know ahead of time when I spoil that so you can skip if you don't want to. Also, you could skip this playthrough and just see what's in the second envelope if you wanted to. But with that said, let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to talk about the tutorial and setup. I know I've done a tutorial of It's a Wonderful World before, but I'm going to go ahead and repeat most of it. And so you're going to set up the play area like so with all your resources available. You got your generals and your financiers here, your crystallium cubes here. And for the entire campaign, you're going to use the B side of one of the corporations. It'll show the letter B down here. And I'll set that here so I can just build up my track of resources here. Now, when you open up the envelope, the first envelope, you're going to get a stack of cards. You can ignore most of these cards, but you do need one of these cultural production cards. And so I'm going to go over a little bit of what it says here concerning the leisure and decadence. So the campaign comprises of six scenarios, but you're only going to play five. So you play them in order unless it tells you otherwise, beginning with the first scenario. All the cards that it references will be labeled with numbers, so they're for easy reference. The victory conditions are the same as the normal game, and that's going to be the same for the solo game. You'll look on the other side here. The solo game tells you you can play four difficulty levels. Normal, 50 victory points. Difficult, 60 victory points. Expert, 70. And Prodigy, 80. And so you choose difficulty level at the beginning of the campaign, and you're going to keep that difficulty level throughout the campaign. I'm going to do the difficult 60 victory point level for this playthrough. And if you don't reach that level, you take a defeat card. Once you have two defeat cards and you lose the third time, then you have to start the campaign all over again. But every time that you do reach that victory point level, you are considered the winner of the scenario for reward purposes. And we'll go over that at the end of the scenario, assuming I win. All right, and so for this scenario here, we have the cultural renaissance. I'll read the history here. Obsessed with productivism, the empire is neglected to devote energy and time to intellectual pursuits, but in any society you will find creative people. And since time immemorial, artists have also been engines that power empires. And so peace has returned to the world, at least in appearance. At the heart of each empire, creative minds start to put things together, a little of this and a little of that, to create what will soon be called art. From that moment forward, each empire will face a choice, hand over the reins to culture or stay the course of productivism. And so you're going to take a cultural production card, which I'll show you in just a moment. You'll place a crystalline cube on the first space of it. And each time you complete the five resources required by the cultural production, return the resources to the supply and advance the crystalline cube on the cultural progress step one space. Then you gain the corresponding cultural bonus. And note you can't add any resources to a space that's already occupied and it is no longer possible or even useful to place resources on it after you've completed the final uh, cultural progress. And so let me show you the card. And so this is the card here and you'll see on the side here that these are the five resources you need to produce and so in or during your production phase you're just going to add the resources whenever you choose to. And then you're going to move the cube along after you complete it and you'll move it along and you'll gain bonuses. The first bonus is to calculate your supremacy bonus by two more than what you have. So in the solo mode, if you have this bonus, you only need a three or better in production. I'll explain that as we go as well. The next one gives you a double supremacy gain, meaning you get two tokens instead of one. And recycling bonus gives you a double bonus here where you get two cubes instead of one. And then the final one gives you 15 points at the end of the game. And as you set up for the solo mode of It's a Wonderful World, you're going to set up eight stacks of five cards off to the side. Every round, you're going to be picking up two of these stacks and choosing cards from them. So I'm going to go ahead and set these up real quick. 
And then the rest of the deck you're going to keep it set aside. Also have this set aside off the screen. All right, so in It's a Wonderful World, you're going to be choosing projects to build, making production lines, and trying to push to gain all these victory points through different cards that you build and gain. And so you start over here with your corporation card with two materials production, one energy production, and one science production. And you're going to try and improve your production so you can build out a lot of cards. And the game ends after four rounds, which is tracked by this token here, or you can track it by the decks because you can use two decks per round and you'll run out of decks at the end of the fourth round. All right, so at the beginning of the first round, you're gonna take one of the decks and you're gonna look through and decide what you want to build from this deck. And so these are the options here. Now on these cards here, you'll see on the left-hand side are the costs of these cards. So you need that many blue cubes or exploration cubes to fill in this particular card. This one needs materials. This one needs a combination of materials and exploration. This one needs exploration as well as two generals tokens. And then this one needs gold as well as two financier tokens. Now at the bottom of the card, you're gonna see a bonus here on the left if they're worth points. Here in the middle, you're gonna see if they produce anything. On the right here, you have the recycling bonus. So if I decide to recycle this card, I get a blue cube. And down here in the bottom right corner is the card type. Now this one here has a point bonus of three points per science card that you build. This one here has one point per general that you have at the end of the game. Generals are already worth one point, so this adds to it, making them worth two points. This is a building bonus here, and in particular, this is three Crystallium cubes that you get for free when you build this card. Now, Crystallium cubes, when you have them, they're wild color, so you can use them on any project for any color. This one here adds energy production to your production line. This one here grants you a financier as a building bonus and gives you energy and gold production. And so in the solo mode, you're able to choose from these five cards which cards you want to build, which ones you want to recycle, or you can spend two cards discarding them, then you draw five cards from the deck, the big deck that's left over, and you get to choose one of those to keep. So it allows you to kind of fish for cards you might like. Now in these cards here, I'm going to go ahead and take the Fountain of Youth because I think it's worth it. I'm going to try and have some generals at the end of the game so it'll boost those points. And the three Crystallium is kind of nice, so we'll get that one. It may take me longer to build this card, but I think it's worth a try. I'm also going to get the Wind Turbines here to help my early production. I'll be able to build this right away and during production and it'll allow me to gain extra energy during that first energy production. I'll explain that when it happens. Now before I decide on this card here, I'm going to go ahead and recycle these two cards. So I discarded them, I drew five cards, and now I get to choose from these ones I might want. And I think I either want the military base or the nuclear power plant. I'm not sure which one. This one gives me a lot of energy production. The military base gives me a general and some science production. But if you notice up here in the top right uh, corner of the card, it tells you how many cards there are in the deck. So there's a lot of these two cards here and there's only one of this one. So I don't know if it's worth the risk to try and build this card instead it will give me science production. It's worth four points, but it does take four blue cubes. I don't have any blue production yet. I don't know. It's, it's tempting. I, I guess I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to take the military base. And then these other four cards get discarded. And I think I'll go ahead and keep the center of the earth in my production line. I think it's worth a try for the end of the game for that 15 points. Between the 15 points here and the 15 points there, I'm halfway to my 60 point goal. And so now that I've done my first hand of five cards, I grab another hand of five cards and we're gonna choose what to do with these here. Now I definitely like the look of the super soldiers here. It does take a lot of science, but it's also gonna boost my general's points. It gives me a general, I think this is worth it. Oh, and I also have research center, which gives me more science, which I might need, and Roswell. That's gonna boost my general's points as well, wow. So I got a lot of cards there going, maybe too many. 
But I'm going to go ahead and recycle these two here. So I'm going to get one gold and one exploration token. And so I can add these tokens to any of the cards I want. And I'm going to go ahead and add it to my production card here. And I just realized I forgot to put my Crystallium Cube at the beginning here. All right, so now that I've gone through two hands of five cards each, it is now the production phase. When you go into the production phase, you're gonna produce based off of your resources here, however many resources you have from the cards you built. See, when you build a card, it's gonna go over here and add to your resources. And you'll see that in just a moment. Because right now I gain two of the gray cubes here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add them to this card here. And we're gonna build that card. So now we go ahead and take this card, we're going to add it to our production line here, and it just lines up like that. And so now its production becomes part of the production. See, we work our way down from gray to black to green to yellow and blue. So we've done our gray production right now. And now we're going to go on to our black, but since I built this card before the black production started, I will gain this black production as well. So I'll go ahead and gain two cubes here, and we'll add them. And then we go into the science production, the green, and I go ahead and gain the one green cube and I'll add it to the cultural production line here. All right, I don't have any yellow or blue cube production. One thing I didn't mention yet is supremacy, production supremacy. So in the solo mode, anytime you produce five of one resource, you will gain a bonus. At the top of these resources here, you'll see the bonus. So this one here grants you a financier. This one grants you a general, this one grants you a choice, then financier, then general. And so when you reach one of those supremacy bonuses, you just take one of these tokens here or one of these tokens here, and you'll set it aside for end game scoring unless you use them for cards like the center of the earth here, which requires two military tokens or generals tokens. All right, so we're going to go ahead and flip this over and start round two, which means we just go ahead and grab a new set of five cards. And so I have these cards here. Now this one definitely looks worth it. You know, Atlantis, it gets two points per general token, but I don't know. I've got a lot of the exploration cards out there right now requiring a lot of blue production. I don't know if I want to use that one right now. This one seems a little bit better for me, especially if I build it earlier because then I will gain blue production. And so I think I'm going to choose this one instead. That might be an error on my choice, but we'll see how it works out. And so I'm going to go ahead and try and build the underwater city. The underwater city here, it does provide three points, but check this out. One science and two exploration. That's a nice production there. And I think I can pull off getting this this round. So I'll have two productions worth by the end of the game. I think that's worth it. I'll set that here. And then the rest of these here, I'm going to go ahead and recycle. So I get one black and two yellow. And I may as well go ahead and add them to that card that I just got. All right, so I'm going to grab another hand of cards here. And we're going to see what we got. I do like this icebreaker here. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to the line. Again, that's going to give me some more blue production. But I'm going to go ahead and discard these two cards so I can draw five cards. And so these are my five cards here. I'm actually just looking for a card with a gray cube for recycling. So I'm going to take that card. I'm going to go ahead and recycle it and then I'll gain the gray cube to the cultural production. All right, so this is now done. So these are going to get removed. I'm just going to set them right there because I'll end up reusing them. And now the crystallium cube moves up one space. And now I can calculate the supremacy bonus with a plus two. Again, that just means I need three of the resources to gain a supremacy bonus. And so these other two here, they are kind of useful, but I think I'm going to go ahead and discard these to draw five cards again. Once again, I'm looking for a gray cube, so I'm gonna keep this card, discard the others, and uh, recycle this card. I'm gonna go ahead and add that gray cube right here. And now we're ready to go into production. So first we start off with the gray, I get two cubes. I'm just gonna add them to this card here, which is gonna finish it off anyways. And so I add this to my line here, and I go ahead and take a general token because it has the building bonus there. Now, I added this card. It has a great production on it, but because great production already started this round, I don't get the, that gray cube this round. It'll be next round. And now I get two black cubes, and we'll go ahead and add um, one here, and I think one here. And then next I get two green cubes, and I'll add one here, which will complete this, and I'll place the other one on the cultural production. And so now this card is complete. 
and we'll add it to production here. And so that's pretty good because now I, we're going into, well, we're going into yellow production, but I don't have any, but I do get the two blue production. So we'll go ahead and add these in. I think I'm gonna go ahead and put them here. All right, so we're gonna flip this over and now we're in round three. We're gonna draw five more cards. And so these are my cards here. I don't see anything that I necessarily want or think I'm gonna be able to produce in time. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside, possibly recycling all three of these. And then I'm gonna discard these two to drive, draw five more cards. And I'm gonna go ahead and take this one, but I'm just gonna set aside for recycling. And so now I'm gonna recycle all of these. So I get two blues, one yellow, and one black. We'll place one blue and yellow on the cultural production card. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not using those, I should be. One blue cube here, and then one black cube here. And then I've drawn five new cards here. Let's see what we got. Again, not much catching my eye. So I'm first gonna recycle this one for a gray cube and we'll place that here. And now this is complete. I can move this forward and get rid of these cubes here. And I'm gonna go ahead and recycle the rest of these here. So I got a green, two black, and one blue. I'll place my two black here, the one green here that's gonna complete that card, and the other blue I'll place over here. And so we'll set these aside. This will get added to the production line. And now we're ready to go into production. So first we have the gray production, which is gonna be three. Now with three gray production, that's gonna grant me a supremacy bonus in a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and place these first, and let's place them right here. And then I'll gain a supremacy bonus with the gray cubes, that's a financier. But now I've unlocked the double supremacy gain, so I actually gained two of these, and we'll set these here. And so next production is energy, and I have two of those, and I'll place one here and one here. That completes this card. And now I'll add this card into production, which will give me more green cubes. And that's the next production, so we're gonna gain five green cubes now. We'll have one on the cultural production, and four right here. Now that gives me a supremacy bonus of choosing generals or financiers. I'll go ahead and gain two generals from that. And once again, I do not have any gold production, so we're gonna move on to the exploration, the blue production, of which I gained four. I'll add one on the cultural production board, then I'll add three right here, and then I'll complete the Fountain of Youth. We'll go ahead and add that to the production line. It doesn't grant me any production, but I do get three Crystallium Cubes. And so we'll add these over here. I can keep them here and use them at any time. Now, one thing that hasn't happened yet, will likely happen next round, is any time you overproduce, where you have enough cubes to fill up your cards and you have leftover cubes, they do go over here. And when you accumulate five cubes, doesn't matter what colors, you can turn them into one Crystallium Cube, as indicated by the bottom of this corner here. Also, if you decide at some point during the construction phase, you can't build something that you've already set up to build, you can recycle it, for its bonus, but it goes straight into this section here. You can't put it on another card. All right, so now we're ready to flip this over and go into the final round. And so now I will draw five more cards. And so these are the cards here. I'm kind of torn. This one I know I can build without an issue. It'll give me one more blue production, which might be worth it. But this one here also <laughs> gives me a bonus to generals. I don't know. I don't think I can accomplish that as well. So I think it's worth it to build this one. I think I'm gonna first recycle these cards. So I'm gonna gain a yellow and a gray. And we'll add those to the cultural board, which now completes it, we'll move this forward. Now any recycling bonus is doubled. With that in mind, maybe I will try to build this one. I'll go ahead and recycle this one for what will be two yellow cubes. I'll add one to the cultural board and then one to the solar cannon here. And then I've drawn the last five cards here. Let's see what we got. Got a lot of blue recycling. Got some gold recycling here. I definitely need this. So we'll go ahead and recycle that. Gaining two gold here. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and recycle all these as well. So it would be three blues and one black, but with the double recycling bonus, it's actually gonna be six blues and two blacks. And so I'll add one black here and one black there. Then I'll add four on this card here one last cube on the cultural production, and then one here. All right, so at this point, I'm actually gonna go ahead and spend one of my Crystallium on this card here and just go ahead and complete it. And we'll place it over here. Now, before I go into production, I realized at the uh, last production when I produced the blue cubes, I did not gain my Supremacy bonus, which would be two generals, so I'll go ahead and gain those right now. 
Okay, so now we're going into the final production of the game. I haven't produced a lot of cards. I hope my gamble's worth it here. But let's go ahead and see what happens. We're going to start off with the gray cubes. I get three of those. And so I'll add one here in the tank division and one here on the cultural production. And then I have one left over and it'll go to my board. And then I gain two financiers from that. And then next we have the black production. I gain two black. Now I'll go ahead and add them to the tank division and complete this card. It'll get added to my production. I will gain one general from that. And then next we have the science production where I gain five. We'll add one to the cultural production here, which completes this card now. That's done. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. We'll add three more right here, which will complete this card. And one here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and spend one crystallium here to complete this card as well. Again, crystallium can be used for any color, so I'm placing that one there. And we'll add both of these to their production, but I get two generals as well. So I'll exchange a single one here for a triple one. All right, once again, I have no gold production, so we're going straight into the ex exploration, which I have seven production. And I'll add five of those here, completing that card. These other two, they could go here or here, it really doesn't matter. I'm not gonna be able to complete this card. So I add this one over here. I get one general from that, and I get two generals from the supremacy bonus on the blue production, so that'll be three. All right, and so we're ready to score the game now. We're gonna try and see if I got the 60 points necessary to win. So you just kinda add up as you go here. First, you're gonna add up base points on cards. The only card I have base points is this one with three points. Oh, that's making me worried. Actually, I have the 15 points here, so that actually makes it 18 points. That's a little bit better. And then I don't have any of these other points here. I just have the financiers and the generals. All right, so you add these all up together. I got six here plus five, that's gonna be 11. So you write 11 here, and then you're gonna times that by how much they're worth. Now I've got plus five here, but they're already worth one, so that's times six. Oh wow, that is a lot of points there. <laughs> but last but not least, I do have four financiers. They're worth one point each, so four times one, making it four. And so I'm gonna end up with, oh my goodness, is that 88 points? Wow, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there. Here, let me move this up. There, 88 points. <laughs> All right, so I definitely beat the goal of 60 points. <laughs> the, the, I might have set the bar a little too low on that one. But then again, I've played this game like 40, 50 times now. So it's not surprising to me. And on top of that, they gave you lots of bonuses. I mean, come on. I got double generals for like the last two productions. That was really good. Okay, so now you look at the back of this sheet. Again, sorry, this is a little bit of a spoiler. Not, not much, but you would have seen this sheet if you started the game anyway. So you have a resolution here. So each player who reached the final space of the cultural progress, they're going to gain 15 victory points, of course, and take pop culture 1-02. Now, Pop Culture 1-02 is this card here. You're able to use it every game going forward. What it does is it, during the draft phase, once per game, allows you to take an extra card and draft two during that round instead of one. Now, that applies to the multiplayer, but in the solo mode, you just draft an extra card. So normally, you gain five in a hand. Well, this one allow you to gain six for one of those hands. And so that's a really handy bonus there. And now each player who has not reached the final space of, of the progress takes a censorship card instead. And what that lets you do is once per game you can discard your entire draft hand and redraw the same number of cards. So in the solo mode, one of your five hands of cards, you'll be able to just completely get rid of it and draw five new ones. And so the winner also, which if you do win the scenario as a solo player, this counts for you. You gain the famous host card. So this card here allows you once per game to place a Crystallium token here to copy the power of your pop culture or censorship card. And so you'll be able to use that power again. And so at the end here, you're gonna return all the cultural production cards to the envelope. And then it says you're ready to open envelope number two. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the, the table here 
and I'm gonna get out envelope number two and show it to you. If you don't wanna be spoiled, you can just head out at this point, and I thank you for watching. But if you wanna see what's in envelope two, I'll go ahead and show you. All right, so here's envelope number two, and we're gonna go ahead and check it out. You can see I haven't even opened it myself yet, so it'll be a surprise to me as well. But here we go. Leisure and Decadence part two. One culture to dominate them all. I won't read the history here. It says to open secret box one. Ooh, I guess we're gonna have to do that in this video as well. And so it's got all the rules. It's got, read the cult culture rules from that box. Interesting. So it's got a cultures, uh, culture board extension. Interesting, oh, okay, this'll be really good. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and open up that box. Again, if you want to skip it, thank you so much for watching, but I want to see what's in it. It's a, it's a big box too. So let's see what we got. Wow, purple cubes. Oh my goodness. And a whole deck of cards here. Oh, they're the normal back. So these are going to get added to the deck. Interesting. All right, let's see. Comes with a rule sheet, five culture cubes. Culture production board. Wow. 35 culture cards, 36 celebrity tokens, 20 bonus tokens. So you add it, you place a culture cube where your corporation is, then you put celebrity tokens, and you shuffle those culture cards within the base game. And so from now on, in all, for all future games, after the exploration production step, you produce culture. Culture works differently from other resources. It's not a physical resource. When you produce it, advance your marker on the culture production one step upward. When your cube reaches the top of the track, the next culture point you gain returns it to its starting space, and you gain one culture token, which you can add to your supply in a bonus token. The more culture you produce, the more you gather, the more points one earns you. Each celebrity is worth one victory point plus one victory point per bonus token you have. There is no supremacy bonus for culture production. And you can play this outside the campaign, so it adds to the game. Very cool. And there's even a radar tower that produces one celebrity during the culture production step. Wow, that's pretty cool. And it gives an example here. Wow, that's great. All right, so we have the bonus tokens here. Here's the culture board, and it looks like these just pop out here, and that, that's great. <laughs> looks great, and it fits right along the end of it. And then all the celebrity tokens here, which look like the same, same uh, quality and thickness of the regular tokens. And just five culture cubes here. All right, and so we have some of the cards here. The shopping mall, there's seven of those. The radar tower, there's five of those. Exhibition center, seven of those. Supersonic jet, five of those. Cybernetic stars. Holograms, Labyrinth of Minds. That's a cool picture. I can't even pronounce that. Is it Yggdrasil? I'm not sure. You'll have to let me know. <laughs> Garden of Eden. Oh, that's kind of awkward. Prehistoric Island, Opera, Grand Stadium, Amusement Park, more Amusement Park, and Movie Studio. Wow, I love having new cards. I love the new board. I love that it just adds to the gameplay and I think it's going to be great. All right, and so there you have it. That was the uh, tutorial and solo playthrough for the first episode of the Leisure and Decadence It's a Wonderful World expansion. I definitely loved my experience with it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I love the fact that the stuff that you get adds to the, the game, like adds complexity, adds different things that you can shoot for. Just remember that I did receive this as a review copy, but my opinions are my own. I always try to give you my most honest opinion about it. But yeah, I'm definitely enjoying this so far. It'll be interesting to play through the whole campaign. I will end up doing a review. I'm gonna play the campaign twice. As it said, you play five of the campaign uh, scenarios, and so I'll play it twice and see how it changes with each run, and I'll talk about it in my review. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.